Hi everyone, welcome back. Today I'm going to show you how to make some uh, fancy tassel out of a bunch of scraps, fabrics that I have here. I'm a quilter from way back and I'm learning to be a little more open to not being precise on everything because as a quilter everything's done in the scant quarter inch realm of quilting and sewing. So I just have some pieces of fabric I had left over. Most of them are the salvages, which is um, the piece from the manufacturing. And what I did there, these have white on the back on this particular one, and I didn't like it, so I glued it together, and now I realize it's too stiff. Well, I did the same with this one here, and what I did was after I glued it together, I cut it in half, so it made it kind of thin. So I'm going to do the same with this one, and you don't need to watch me do that process. I'm just going to take a pair of scissors, and I'm going to trim it down, you know, like this, all the way down, this little fabric here. And once I get to the other end, what I did, it was still just slightly stiff, and that's an easy fix with the fabric. I just kept um, playing with it. And it loosened it back up so now it's nice and soft again. So I'm going to go ahead and do that, you know, cutting off camera because, you know, it's kind of a waste of time just to watch me cut fabric. But what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to make a little tassel for a bookmark. And this is not an original idea. I saw this on um, a YouTube channel that I really enjoy watching called Al John who in turn saw this at Treasured Books. And what it does is it uses a fan that you get from the dollar store. And it's so funny because I cleaned out my car and I happened to find a broken fan in my car from this summer when, you know, it was a million degrees out. And I didn't know what to do with it, but it was so pretty. And, you know, I can still sort of use it if I had to. I guess, you know, I could hold it like that and fan myself, but now I have another little piece of prettiness for my scrap booking journeys and my journals and all that. So I haven't decided which one I'm going to use yet, and I will do that later. You have the really thin ribs that go throughout the whole fan, or you have the ones that are on the end. And I think this is the one I'm kind of going with for right now, only because this is going to be a little bit thicker than the average um, tassel, I guess. So anyway, along with this, I'm going to use another scrap, and that's a bunch of my little paper beads that I made. I rolled a bunch of these the other day, and I knew I was going to use it for something. I just wasn't quite sure what. And I'm going to do my own little version of a giant sewing needle. I'm going to take a twisty tie, and I hope it's not too thick for this. This one's kind of substantial. And I'm going to put my little bead through the hole. I'm hoping that it works so far so good. Let's see if I can pull my... No, well, that's where I'm going to have the trouble. Try to get my little uh, bead through there, but that might be a little thick. Oh, there you go. I got it. Now I have a bead on my little tassel, and I can move these up and down. If I want it to stay there, I could tie a little knot, maybe. Now I'm doing this on the fly. I've never done this. This is the first one. You're seeing my little somewhat creative process as we go. I really don't think I can stuff it through a bead, but let's try it without that big old fat piece of wire. That doesn't work. I think I'm going to go look for another bread tie because that one is a little thick. And I don't want to have to hassle with it quite that much. So let's try this out here. Yeah, and that worked just fine. Just stiff enough to put it through. I'm going to tie another knot because this one for sure I want to stay where it's at. And if that's not quite a fat enough knot, I can always come back do a second one, and if that's not fat enough, I can always put a dot of glue later. But you don't need to see me putting a dot of glue. So, there we go. 
Well, I think I will put a dot of glue later. So this one has two little beads on it. And I think I'm just going to continue adding some cute little beads all along. This one is going to be, I think, a little more difficult. This one's still kind of stiff. Let's see if I can get those little strings through there, maybe. Maybe I could pull it through. If not, I'm going to need my little wire persuader there. If I had a nice big eyed needle, that would be probably the easiest way to go. But unfortunately, I don't have one. And it's late at night and I won't be able to go get one. So there we go. It works just fine to do this. And I don't think I need to tie that one on there. So let's see. I think I'm going to do pink on here. Just because it contrasts really cute. Oh, well, that's going to be a pain. Well, let me string a few beads and I'll bring you back because you don't need to see me fussing with that. And I'll show you how I progress. I just wanted to edit this in here really quick because I don't want it to seem like it's more difficult than it is to string these beads. And I don't edit out things that, you know, show me struggling because I want people to realize that this is easy to do. So I did find a thinner piece of wire. Um, it's just a bread tie, you know, the ones that twist on the end of the bread. But any thin piece of wire will work. Um, beading needles are actually made from a really, really thin piece of wire that's folded in half. And you could put the material between it. So anyway, I'm just going to put this across and I pinch it down at the end here to, you know, kind of narrow that down a little bit. And then I can just grab whatever bead I want to use and put it on here. And it pulls right on. So, you know, I made it look a lot harder than it did because I had the wrong size wire. So, um, I just wanted to put this in here to show you. It didn't take me hardly any time at all to string all those beads. <laughs> that is if I get it in the opening. There you go. And they just went right on like that. So, um... I didn't want to discourage anybody thinking it was a lot harder than it was. So anyway, just wanted to show you that real quick. Just a thin piece of wire or, um, you know, in my case, a bread tie that's, you know, rather thin. So, Oh, I really apologize, everybody. My phone is just acting up something awful today. So after I got all the beads strung, you can see I got, you know, two or three or four beads on each little string. I folded it in half over a pencil so I had something to kind of grip on. And I did find a little piece of colored thread and all I did was I held it like this and I that this what this is what the pencil helps with because then I can I don't have to worry about it. It's just the way I need it. And I happen to wind it up around the pencil like so until I got like you know kind of a pretty little tie underneath where I wanted it to be and I just tied it in a knot a couple of times made sure that you know I have a really good strong knot probably better ways to do it but this is the way I figured it out like I said this is the first time I've done one of these and I'm just doing it on the fly today, and I'm trying to show you guys, but my phone won't cooperate, so let's hope this time it does. So I tied it like so, and I'm going to get my little scissors and my little tassels done then. Now, I could... You, you know, usually you have a jump ring or you have some wire and you can make a nice big jump ring. And unfortunately, I don't have any wire. Not in the house, anyway. I might be able to dig some up out in the barn, but I ain't going out there in four-degree weather. 
at night when it's pitch black. I could use that one big fat piece of wire I had or a paper clip, but I think it'll work out just fine using this thread here because it, it's kind of heavy, so it should hold my tassel just fine. And I'm just going to take my pencil out. Got a nice size hole. See, that's why I did the pencil, because I knew I'd be able to see that really well. I could thread it through. Grab my end. Now I want to make sure it's on this side, so when it's in the book, it'll be on, you know hanging out the book, because this mark will be in there. I think it'll be in the way the other side, so... I'm going to tie this up, you know, not super tight. I think I'm going to use my little pencil again to give me a spacer. Because I think that'll be a nice space amount for it. And I don't have to worry, did I pull it too tight? Did I make it too loose? I can pull my knot nice and tight that way. There's my little thread there. Come on. Oh my goodness, I'm just all fiddly tonight, I guess. Well, now it's a little loose, but that's okay. It'll be fine. Make a couple of knots. If I don't like it, it's just a piece of string. I can always redo it, right? I guess I'm learning. I'm learning I don't have to be really exact with everything in this journey of junking because I'm just not used to having things just kind of be... Oh well, that's the way it is. And it's liberating to say the least. So, there you go. That'll work. Let me pull that little knot down underneath. And if I really want to, I could glue it down in there, but there you go. I think I'm okay with that. That'll work. If I don't like it, I will cut it off and add it. Now I can just put it down into my book. It's on the correct side. And there you go. I think I like it. Well, I thought I'd take a minute just to show you my completed project. I went from a broken fan to this cute little dangle that I can put in my journal to mark the pages where I'm working on. So let's see. I need to add a little more bling to those guys so I can mark my page. And I have a cute little dangle. Again, all from junk and paper beads that I rolled. I think it turned out kind of cute. What do you think? And I think my girl in the background says it's time to play ball. So I got to run.